you want to have everything prepped before we start filming? Well, I've got to get the fire going so I can get some more sticks. Okay. That's pretty much it. And then we just wipe it We have run aground, stranded on this deserted island, full of man-eating crocodiles, patrolled by man-eating white sharks, and infested with man-eating wallabies. We're about to do a catching cook for you guys with one of the bearer from this morning. There we go. There you go, Maza. Hey, hey. Hey. Hey, boy. That's the right kind. Here, let's uh, let's get some underwater. Oh! Whoa. You having fun yet, Joshy? Yeah. I see these things every day in my life, mate. Right? It could be good to put one for the beach cook up too. <laughs> beach, beach, beach. Nice. Yeah. Have a nice little one for the morning. This one will be good for a bit of a beach cook up later, I reckon. We have the closest thing we have to a native. His name is Josh. Apparently he knows how to uh, cook fish the traditional way in this part of the world. So he used a traditional lighter to light the traditional fire. And apparently he's going to get the coals going and throw the entire fish. Guts, slime, scales and all. Yeah, I'm going to take the guts down. Okay. At first he was like, yeah, we're going to throw the whole thing in there. Yeah. All we're going to do is get the fire going, which is obviously we've already got that sorted. Just let it die down and then just throw the fish straight in the coals. And just spread a little bit over it and then we'll just pull it out, pull it up in the, water, in the salt water a little bit and then just dig in. Maybe a little bit of lemon. We're just going to cut what we should need. Lemon into a few little pieces. For flavor. We'll leave that one for the end. <laughs> Get all that blood out. Go straight into the coals. <laughs> Pretty fancy, isn't it? I like it. That's it. You just want to hold in for me. We'll get this fire ready. The glorious Berramundi. You went out like a G, man. Like, much respect. Ah, ready? It's kind of what you get for eating that dumb gulp stuff. Make sure those lemons don't fall in. Yeah, I'm, I'm squeezing the butthole. It's a technical term. Squeeze the butthole. You want to straighten the coals there, mate? Okay. Just lay it down. Straight that little bed. Thing. Yeah. Oh, God, that's hot. What's the coal to sand ratio that you suggest? <laughs> but it it's just really the matter. coal, mate. You just lay it straight down and we wash him off. Do we need to make more coals? No. Just make sure I hold your hand there for longer than five seconds. I'm good. I'm just going to lay some these big leaves that I found up there down to lay him on. This should work fine. Keep them out of the sand. Hopefully they're not poisonous. That would help. Romantic. I'm going to attempt to make a couple of little chopsticks. Chopsticks. Is it for the Chinaman fish that we're about to catch? It's to keep the Chinaman happy. Oh, the, 
There's a Chinaman fish out here. Two of them, actually. I'm not kidding. Insert picture. So how come you're making chopsticks and not forks? <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> it's pretty good, man. Making chopsticks, but... Well, it's kind of crooked, but it's all right. <laughs> okay, to handle that. My ancestors would approve. <laughs> I hope this isn't illegal. <laughs> Proof of concept. Should nice. Work. Should work just fine. <laughs> get a bit of, get Australian a, engineering. Get a bit of practice in before the, the main course. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed. So there's ants up here that have got, mm, they're, they're green, they've got a little green ass and you can actually eat them and they taste like salt and pepper. Green ass ants. Mm. I wouldn't go sitting at the bush and eating every one. <laughs> you could actually grab one and eat it. That's a real thing though. Yeah. You well, know I don't know how many people do it. Me and Dad were out fishing one day and he told me about it, so I tried a couple and they like salt and pepper. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've hung around with Pete for a little bit now. I think he might have been... Pulling your leg, young fella. <laughs> he was eating them too. <laughs> well, let's find some green ass ants. We, we were kind of low on seasoning. Oh, actually, here you can see where the Aboriginals have um, been at one point. They probably had a little fire here. So you can see here that this is a old spot where the Aboriginals have had a bit of a cook up. Cooked up some mussels and stuff that got out of the sea. If you actually walk on these beaches, you'll find hundreds of these little old fire pits where they've had a bit of a cook up. Some would be hundreds of years old. You're like a recreational archaeologist. I'm making half of this up. Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones! Are you just going to grab a pair of pliers and just walk down there and hope he doesn't fall apart at the head? Yep. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. Can you make a giant spatula? <laughs> His tool making is lim limited to chopsticks. You idiots. Oh, looks like he created a fan? <laughs> no. This will be to clean the barrow down. Oh, okay, <laughs> so it's a barrow brush. <laughs> you can find that in the link below. Twigabastreams.com.au <laughs> Twig berry. Had this in for about 20 minutes. Uh-oh. Sun's falling apart. Oh. Well played. Up yeah, so I'm gonna just run down to the water and just do this. Damn it. <laughs> Use a stick. Oh, gonna run down to the water and give this a rinse off. Give it a rinse off of all the sand and stuff it's got on it. And we'll go back and lay it down, peel back all the skin and hopefully it's cooked inside and have a bit of a bit of lunch. Expertly crafted chopsticks. Alright, so I'm gonna assume we just kind of peel back the, the skin of the fish in one piece. 
We did we did something real similar when I was in Texas. They uh, they serve redfish and they call it served on the half shell. So they actually fillet the fish but leave the skin on and they char it on the skin skin side. Right. Then you would just eat it off of the skin on one side. So I'm going to assume that we can just peel this cooked skin part. Oh, look at that. All in one go here. Try to contain all that skin and scales in one piece. That flesh underneath looks pretty prime. This is why you guys should pay attention in your basic anatomy courses. Dissecting fish. We do a lot of it. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty cool, man. I've cooked a lot of fish a lot of different ways. I've never cooked one in the dirt. <laughs> you done one with the backdrop like this? <laughs> never, never with this kind of backdrop. And look at this, the skin, the scales and all peel back pretty easily. Oh wow, look at that. And some lemon and we'll have a bit of a dip first. All right, moment of truth. Doesn't get any more simple and basic and clean than this. This is clean eating. And as uh, our friends in France would say, bon appetit. Here's to nothing. First taste of bear money too, isn't it? This is my first wild bear money I've ever had. That's absolutely delicious. Mm. But I like seafood. We don't have any sweet chili sauce for you this time. <laughs> like seriously, this is legit. Clean white meat fish cooked perfectly, it just comes off in big chunks right off the backbone. Dude, that's good. Yeah, we're gonna kill this whole thing. I would definitely do this again. Well, if you guys ever find yourself stranded on a deserted island for like 37 days uh, without the company of a volleyball, and you need to find something to eat, go catch a bear on Monday, get you some Berkeley Gulp. Cult prawns, guys. Get stranded on the island with some cult prawns. <laughs> and you can feed yourself with wild caught barramundi here in the Northwest Territory. Just watch out for the man eating koalas. Here you go. Look at that bite. Aw. Oh. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> oh, this is. Dude, this bear money is so good. There's like not a bunch of bones in it. No fishiness at all. I think even Kate might like this. You should try this, Kate. Next time uh, on the next family outing, ask Josh to cook some fish in the dirt for you. You might be pleasantly surprised. Hmm, now we get to the Toro. So once you guys are done eating off of one side, Simplest way to get access to the other side is to leave that skin side down and then start from the tail and just lift that backbone, that vertebrae, away from the flesh. Just like that. Oh boy. That's crazy. Look at that. This is like a perfect eating size fish. You got Quite a bit of, of yield out of the meat. These boys aren't really that big into seafood, right? You just started eating raw fish recently. Josh is. I like raw fish more than cooked fish. Mm, and that was new. A couple years ago. Mm, 
It's clean. Yeah, I think it's hard to beat fresh caught, fresh fish. Yeah. And fresh saltwater barramundi too. Oh, right. A pretty high standard. Good job, Cook. Yeah. You like seeing more of these two idiots catch, cook, and murder everything in sight? Like, comment. Hold on, who are the idiots? Because there's three of us. <laughs> you guys can work that out. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna just chill out now. Eat some more fish. Yeah. Maybe catch a couple more too. You wanna roll it? Thanks for tuning in, guys. We're out. If you guys liked this episode of Catch and Cook, the Survivor Series, leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow Big Bass Dreams Australia on the gram and Facebook. And uh, this is Oliver and I, Josh, and Cal, signing off. Gonna finish off this fish and go looking for a bigger one. Yeah. Okay, we caught it in the breeze, but the breeze ain't blowing like me. Marker, hold up. You don't need to hold up. Tell